Hi, if you've got the Blast IR wireless and you're having a little bit of trouble getting it working correctly, here are some quick, easy troubleshooting steps to get it working. First, make sure you've got it set up correctly. The blue side is the receiver. This picks up signal from the remote. So the remote has to be able to point directly at this. If it's not pointed at it, it won't be able to receive from the remote control. The same goes for the emitter side. The emitter broadcasts through this little eye right here, so that needs to be pointed directly at the device that you'd like to control. That also goes for the standalone emitters and receiver. If you want this to be out of sight and you just want to run this standalone receiver, plug it into the front of the unit and make sure that this is visible to the remote control. If it's not, it won't be picking up any signals. Same goes for the emitter side of things. Plug it into the emitter if you don't want this to be pointed at and broadcasting to your device, and then just attach the little eye, they have a little stick them on there, so you can stick it right to the front of your device. You'll also need to make sure that the unit is powered up, and we include two power supply options. The standard wall ward power supply, it just plugs into a wall, uh, wall power supply, and a USB power supply that'll plug into like a USB port on your TV or if you have available USB power there. A good thing to pay attention to is, the first time you plug it in, this little indicator LED, which will normally be off and will only blink when it's receiving signal, should flash briefly. And that's a great way to know if you're actually getting power. So, if we take a look right here, when we plug in the power supply, you should see that light come on briefly. And it does, so we know that we are getting power. As long as it's powered up and pointed in the right direction, it should be working okay. If that's the case and it's not working, you're commonly having one of three issues. The first common issue is a simple setup issue. One of the nice features of the Blast IR Wireless is it has a channel select, so if you have multiple kits, you can either tell them all to talk to each other or tell certain kits to only talk to certain other kits. But if you only have one, and if they're set to a, the wrong channel, it won't work correctly. So, if you take a look at the bottom of both units here, there's a little channel selector that you can switch with a little eyeglass screwdriver. Make sure that these are all both set to the same channel. By default, they come set to channel zero, and if you don't mess with it, it should be just fine. The second common issue is attenuation between the two halves of the kit. So, if you have everything set up correctly and, the, uh, and pointed in the right direction, but it's still not working, it could be that the two halves of the kit just aren't talking to each other correctly. And the way to find out if that's the case is actually very, very easy. They both have one of these little indicator LEDs, and so if you trigger the infrared receiver, the infrared emitter side will also light up. So we can, we can, we can see right here if that's the case. Hey, what do you know? So when I trigger the receiver, the indicator on the emitter also lights up, and that's because these two kits are talking to each other just fine. If you find that when you trigger the receiver, the emitter doesn't light up, the issue that you're having is probably that there's either too much distance between the two, or there's something interfering with the signal. So if you're shooting through concrete with rebar, or if you've got a heavy Wi-Fi signal, it's very unusual for a signal like that to interfere with this. Normally it works just fine even in an environment where there's lots of Wi-Fi, but that could interfere. So, if that's the case, try shutting your Wi-Fi off and testing it again. The third common issue is a compatibility issue between the extender and your remote control. So, remote controls broadcast infrared signals at a certain frequency. Virtually everything in the market is inside the frequency that this supports, but if it's not inside that frequency, if it's just one of those outliers, then it won't work correctly. And it's pretty easy to tell if that's the case. So, uh, if you get a, if you take a look down the barrel of my remote control here, and I and I jam on some buttons, you won't see anything because infrared light is invisible to the naked eye. You won't, if you look at your remote, you won't be able to see anything. And if you look at the emitter, you'll see the indicator LED because that's just lighting up to tell you that it's working. But you won't see the little emitter eye flashing and sending out infrared signals because they're invisible. But Digital cameras will pick up those sort of infrared signals. So, if I go to my camera here, and then I, I, I point it at you fine folks so you can see it. As you can see, the remote control itself lights up when I press buttons. And that's because 
it's sending out an infrared signal that I can't see with my eyes, but I can see with my camera here. So if we look at the blast IR itself, and then we, we trigger the receiver with the remote control, we'll see two things. First, the indicator LED will light up, and we can see that with our eyes, but through the camera, we should also be able to see the infrared emitter lighting up with infrared. If the two halves of the kit are doing that, if it is broadcasting infrared signals, but it's not controlling your device, it could be that compatibility problem. Now, one note on this camera test, some camera phones are kind of sophisticated because, you know, infrared light could uh, ruin your photos, so they have an infrared filter that will prevent you from running this test. So, before using your phone to test the, uh, the uh, Blast IR, it's good to do the same thing with your actual remote control, just to make sure that your camera doesn't have an infrared filter. So, three steps to troubleshoot the Blast IR. After you've gotten it all set up and made sure that everything is pointed in the correct direction, make sure that both kits, uh, make sure that both units are on the same channel. Make sure that the two halves of the kit can talk to each other by verifying that the indicator LED lights up on both. And make sure that it's actually broadcasting infrared signals into the device that you're trying to control. You can do that with that camera test. If all three of those things are the case and it's still not controlling your device, it probably isn't compatible. If that's the case, give us a call. We can find you something that'll work. Uh, if not, uh, yeah, whatever is the issue, fix that and it should work just fine. Thank you very much and uh, give us a call if you have any questions.